Hello, my name is Mike Rayner, and this video is about how to install Windows Vista into VirtualBox. The outcomes from this video would be to create a guest virtual computer in VirtualBox, install Windows Vista 32-bit as a VirtualBox virtual computer, update Windows Vista, and install VirtualBox guest editions. Requirements would be a Windows Vista .iso file with a product key, an internet connection, and enough memory to run both Windows Vista and the host operating system. You're going to need one gigabyte for Vista plus the required memory for your host operating system. Additional info, you've got Windows Vista installing, reinstalling from Microsoft, and then there's another one at goes over how to install Vista. Now you can also take a look at the Windows Vista requirements. If you want to improve your graphics, take a look at VirtualBox User Manual Chapter 4.4. And then I've included a disclaimer. While I've researched this material, I can't fully verify that it will work with all combinations of hardware and software out. So I've been asked to include a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop the video and read the disclaimer. Here I am in Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager, and I'm going to create a virtual machine that's going to be running Vista. In order to do that, I click on New, and give this machine a name. In this case, I'll call it Vista 30, 32B for Vista 32 bits, and then Microsoft Windows and version Windows Vista and there's also Vista 64-bit but I'm going to create a 32-bit machine. Click Next. Now default is uh, memory size is 512 but I'm going to give it 1024 or 1 gigabyte of memory. Click Next. Create a virtual hard drive now. Create. VirtualBox disk image VDI. Next. I always select dynamically allocated. It's a little bit slower than fixed size, but it doesn't take up as much hard drive space. It only uses as much of your hard drive as there are files on the uh, virtual computer. Click Next. And here I'm going to change the size to 50 gigabytes. I can always increase the size, but I have to go to the VirtualBox command line in order to do that. Click Create. And so here my machine is created. One thing I have to do here is click on storage and I'm going to pick up the ISO file and put it into this CD, the IDE controller. Let's go and choose one. In this case I have one here but let me go choose. And so what you have to do is you have to use the uh, file structure and find wherever you've stored it. In this case I've got it local disk, project videos, Vista 3. Vista ISO, and here it is. Wherever you've got it stored, click Open. Click OK, and so that's set up. Display. Here it says 27 megabytes. If you want to give it a little more, that's fine. And I'm not going to pick any one of these. It's going to be a basic machine. Click OK. One thing I will do is put in the description Vista 32 bit and the date 1 10 14. Click OK. Now, some other things that you can do if you want to. If we go to system here, you can give it more than one processor. If you notice here, I've got one, two, three, four processors on the host machine, so I can give it more than one, but I'm just going to give it one. And then here, here it shows that I've got acceleration from the hardware, and this is set in your BIOS. Click OK. Default network is NAT. You've got some other choices here. If you want this to work with some other machines on your network, you should probably pick Bridge Adapter. Anyway, this trying to explain all these is a little bit beyond this video. So just use NAT or Bridge Adapter. 
Click OK. So now we're ready to start. Here I am in Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. I'm going to right click on the Vista 32B machine and start it. Windows is loading files. I'll be skipping parts of this video, but anytime it comes into a screen where you have to enter any data, I will always be showing that screen. You first, you've got some language to install, English, time and currency, format, I pick English, or keyboard or input method. That's US. Now make sure you pick this keyboard or input method to match your keyboard if you're not doing this from the United States. Click Next. I just clicked Install Now. Now it wants your product key. Now one thing, I always uh, uncheck this, automatically activate Windows when I'm online unless I've got about 25 machines to install. So I uncheck it just in case there's some problems with the computer. Click Next and hopefully the product key has been entered correctly. i accept the license terms. You can go through and read it if you wish. Click Next. And the choice here is Custom Advanced. This is a brand new virtual machine, brand new guest, so there shouldn't be anything on the uh, virtual hard drive. And here we have the hard drive disk, 50 gigabytes. Next. And so we're going to trundle along here. Expanding files has completed and we should Soon be entering install, installing features. That's complete. Computer is installing updates. Installing updates is complete. So now Windows needs to restart to continue. And you can click down here to get it to restart in the right hand corner. On the restart, you do not want to press any key to boot from the CD or DVD because that means that you'll start the ISO file again. Please wait a moment while Windows prepares to start for the first time. The screen goes black and you're going to have to wait a few minutes. So now we are in the completing installation phase. We've gone to a black screen again appears that Windows has rebooted. Don't press any keys. So far it's taken about 18 minutes to get to this screen. It'll vary depending on how much hardware and memory and everything you have. I'm going to type in a username and a password. Make sure I get it right. And you should type in a password hint if you have a little trouble with passwords. I'm just going to put in guess. That tells me what it is. And then we get to choose a picture. I think I'll go with puppy dog. Click next. Here it says type a computer name. I'm going to just in lowercase. The reason for lowercase is because you may want to use this computer talk to Linux machines and keep everything lowercase. Win, oh, I'm sorry, not win. Vista 32B, the same name that I gave the machine in Oracle VirtualBox, but in this case, all lowercase. Desktop background, pick this one. Click Next. For updates, I always like to choose automatically, especially for a virtual machine, which I may not be using every day. Click on Use Recommended Settings. And then the, pick your time zone. Here, in my case, it's Eastern Time, U.S., Canada. Click Next. 
and select your computer's current location. Basically, this is less secure in the public, so you've got more security options set. I'm going to pick Work, click Start, and I'm waiting. Finally, a screen comes up. Some advertising. Looks like I'm ready to go. Now it's been about 25 minutes since I first started. So the next thing to do is to update your Windows machine. And of course, if you're going to use this for anything serious, you have to install antivirus. But I'm not going to cover that. I'm just going to cover the update because you have to do the update before you add the uh, VirtualBox guest editions. So let's go up here to devices in VirtualBox. If you look right here, the ISO file is chosen. And so I'm just going to choose host drive E. Should be out of there, so it's host drive E. Here you've got your welcome screen. system and maintenance. So now I'm going to basically do one thing here is check for updates and install the updates. Now this is going to take a long time so you don't have to kind of watch what happens but I'm going to install the updates check and install. All the updates should be added before you add VirtualBox guest editions or that's my recommended method because I don't want one of the updates to interfere with the uh, VirtualBox guest editions. So the install took about 25 minutes. I'm going to go through the updates and then I'm going to install VirtualBox guest editions and then you'll wind up with a full larger screen instead of this mini window that we have now. Here we've got the uh, updates for the computer downloaded. Now we've got to basically install the updates, so click on install. Again, you've got to accept the license. Click finish. And then you've got that user access control that everybody just seems to love. Windows needs your permission to continue, so click on continue. And we'll come back when this is uh, fully downloaded and installed. Here, here we are at 99% uh, complete. And the downloads, of course, you know, it'll take another 10 minutes for that other 1% to finish. After the downloads, of course, it has to prepare to install. After creating a restore point, Vista begins installing update 1 of 100. This is going to take quite some time, so I'm going to come back after we've got all these updates installed. After attempting to upload 100 updates, the computer updated, and back at the log in screen. So now we should really do the updates again. One of the things is not all the updates were installed. I'm not going to run this at the startup, so I'm just going to click right here, close it, and go to Control Panel, check for security, check for updates. And the message from the last set of updates is we need three important updates install the updates. If not all the updates get installed at one time or it says we're unable to finish installing the updates, uh, that's not a big uh, problem. You just go back and uh, redo it. Basically what has happened is that you're installing some updates and the computer may not be able to get them all correctly installed without going through the update installation when it has a hundred updates. What I'm trying to say is that I mean, you may have to go through updates two or three times, depending on what your situation is. 
to get all the updates correctly installed. And this is not something to worry about because Vista may be in an inconsistent state and so I can't fully install the updates and that's kind of normal. So it's kind of like a safety measure. When you're dealing with 100 updates you may have to go through it two or three times. Here it says the updates were successfully installed. So let's go ahead and restart. After all the updates have been applied, I'll go and install VirtualBox Guest Editions. In order to do that, I go up here on the VirtualBox Virtual Manager and go Devices. Well, Host Drive E is already chosen, so I did that previously, so you just make sure you have that. And then click here, Install Guest Editions. So then you can go right here, right click. Well, okay, it popped up. Sometimes they don't pop up and then you right click and click on explore and go to the DVD or the CD drive. Run VirtualBox Guest Editions. UAC comes up, user account control, continue. Next and next and I'm not going to do any direct D support here, so I'm just going to click install. The UAC may pop up once or twice here. And here it is again, install. Again, Windows Security comes up again and install. Now it's finished and you'll see it says reboot now because we want to reboot after installing guest editions. Here I've got Windows restarted after installing Guest Editions. With VirtualBox Guest Edition install, you'll see that it uh, goes to a larger screen and everything seems to be working. Of course, you'll have to add your own antivirus or uh, this may get infected fairly easily, especially if you're using a lot for uh, browsing on the network. Anyway, that's it for installing Windows Vista in VirtualBox. Thank you.